the title uh, pretty much explains what I'm going to talk about. And for, so this is a joint work with uh, Andrea Di Lorenzo. Uh, although there are some inputs, let's say, of uh, coming from joint work um, with other people that I'll mention uh, on the way. Okay, so maybe I'll start by introducing some notation. Um, yes, so so to be the, the, today, or at least in this talk, K will be a perfect field of characteristic uh, not two and three. Um, not two is more um let's say i think you could do something in characteristic three but uh for simplicity we've been dealing uh, we've been we have excluded this case for characteristic two maybe one has to be uh definitely more careful and yeah so perfectness of the base field uh, maybe also can be can be avoided but uh, i don't want to go into too much in, into these technicalities for the moment and when i say variety today I mean, uh, in case I forget, I mean separated finite type. Okay, uh, over K. All right, so maybe in this setting, uh, one has uh, a good notion of, um, say, Chao groups with coefficients, or rather Chavik groups. With coefficients, and these are <clears throat> can be constructed in a rather general form at the at the moment, which is basically the following. So one starts with um, homotopy modules, right? And um or maybe equivalently with generalized cycle modules and from those one constructs a, a Rochmid complex associated to a variety and a line bundle <clears throat> and then so maybe i'll denote it like how do I denote it? Well, let's make direct an example. The example will be mostly interested in, in any cases, Milner with K theory. So this gives us uh, complexes C, X, J, um, L, right? And um, once we have Rochmid complexes, we just take their homology in a suitable, suitable degree and we get uh, child groups with coefficients. This is, of course, a bit more general definition than what Rost had in mind, since we consider generalized cycle models here, or rather general homotopy models. And <clears throat> so to continue this example of miller k theory, this complex, maybe I'll write it down once, is just the complex concentrated in degrees d to zero, homological degrees d to zero. And in degree zero, there's kj of uh, points of dimension d, sorry, dimension zero. Um, we should take a bit more space. So <clears throat> we said here k. J Milner Witt residue field of points of dimension zero. And <clears throat> there's a twist that I should put here, which is the twist by the um, determinant of the um, differential form, the dual. Uh, no, sorry, it's um, 
it's right. It's just a determinant of the differential forms of the residue field over the base field. And I tensor that with L. Okay. And this complex. So this is in degree zero, and then I have something in degree D, which is um, again sum over points of dimension D this time of K minor V J plus D. Again, same things. Okay. And <clears throat> Um, all right, and D is the dimension of X, the total dimension of X. Okay, so this is the um, Rochmid complex associated with Miller bit K theory, for example. And if you have another cycle module, you place here and here and here the relevant uh, somehow pieces of degree of degree J and J plus D, respectively. Okay. So in, in this setting, we have uh, Chow groups with coefficients. So maybe I'll define it like this, Chow with groups. I, um, X, L are the homology in degree I of this complex, right? See, um, X minus I, L. Okay. So, hmm. <clears throat> Right, so this is the this is the the usual say, definition, and observe that I'm I'm using this kind of homological notation because I I want to I will have to do with something singular at some point, and so I want to be able to <clears throat> to use an, somehow uh, the formalism of uh, of tau groups on on singular varieties, and this is possible because tau groups with uh, tau with groups with coefficients have basically the properties of a um, border homology. So I have push forwards <coughs> along proper maps, pullbacks along flat, um, et al maps. And Chavit groups, Chav groups with coefficients are actually a uh, border homology in practice. So, so, um, <clears throat> so this is, they have all the functorialities that, are, that all the nice functorialities even on, uh, on singular singular varieties. One has, has to be careful with pullbacks, of course, but <clears throat> basic functorialities are there. So maybe, uh, right, maybe, um, what, should, what should I say? Uh, right, that uh, if, uh, if X is smooth and equidimensional and equi of dimensional D, Then we have also uh, some more cohomological definition, which is tau tilde d minus i of um, L. And here I have to twist by the determinant of the tangent bundle. Okay, so okay, and maybe as I uh, have remarked already, maybe I should write it down. Um, the cohomology of, of this complex, of course, one consider when we consider the, com the homology in degree i of the complex uh, cj with j equal to minus i, but, but one can consider i and j different in general, and one has a whole um, uh, border more homology theory, basically, at, at uh, in, in, we have, yeah. So in, in our hands, this is really a border homology theory. So we will write like this, H i of C x j l is nothing else than the, maybe I'll put it in quotes, the border homology
of x relative to the base um, with coefficients in the homotopy module we started with. Okay, and this has to be interpreted. I put some out quotes here because one has to be careful with the twist and how to make sense of the twist. So one should, in order to have this identification, one should really twist by Tom spaces of vector bundles rather than just the determinant. Um, so this can be made precise, but we will not really use this um, deeply today. Um, so that a remark that I maybe should write down is that <clears throat> um, so this construction can be done with other homotopy modules and usually so the, the most important ones that will, will pop up today are uh, well of course Milner Witt we've already done it for Milner key theory we get tau groups tau groups or tau say tau homology then then we have fundamental ideals of the Witt ring and those we get I homology. Um, if we, we can use Milner um, K theory mod two, um, and that gives us um, tau groups mod two. Um, wait, maybe yes, mod two. And what else will we use? Well, this is the these are the main things that we use today. And so the usual, well, usual for motivic people, square, um, where we have, let's say, um, Milner with K theory, Milner K theory, Milner mod two and i n so i and i right this is a pullback square and <clears throat> this is a say a multiple pullback square of uh, Rosmit complexes and gives that the chavit um, rings um of x l are naturally fit in an extension um between two groups p and q say and um where we can say something about uh um p and q so p is the pullback of the somehow natural map from so uh, okay how i'm using uh homological notation here, maybe I should use the homological one because it's true in general. Right, so there we go. So tau going to tau mod two from IN homology. Um, so this is to be precise than H I of I minus I. And then, so this is a pullback. <clears throat> and here we, we, we can also write down what this is very explicitly, but so we will not really go too much into that detail today. So I'll just say that this is a quotient of uh, the two torsion of the corresponding child group. Right. Um, good. So this is more or less what I need about uh, Notation. Uh, does it? Are there any questions so far? Does it look good? 
Yeah, yeah. Okay, so if there are no questions, I'll keep going. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, I have to hide what I've just written. Well, let's try to do this maybe. Okay, so <clears throat> the maybe the second step is that one can produce an equivalent theory. Uh, with coefficients and I will state this for Miller with K theory because that's what we need today but this as you, this works for every homotopy module okay and <clears throat> the basic observation is that as soon as you have uh, let's say a reasonable homology theory okay where in degree p, the part of degree p only depends on cycles um, of, a, say, with a bounded dimension, and uh, and which is a motop invariant. You can basically extend this construction to, uh, say, quotient stacks by constructing a by doing a, let's say, by by defining the theory on stacks by um let's say approximations in uh, somehow following the work of uh, totaro added in gram so maybe i should write it here and so for this maybe i'll i'll just say that um, if G is an algebraic group, that maybe we take so smooth. I don't want to have problems here. G smooth group over K, smooth of fine group over K. And um, right, so V uh, as your representation. Um, so we call um, approximation or scheme approximation, but better. Um, of BG in codimension smaller or equal than P. Um, the pair, or rather a pair, V U, where as I said, V is a representation, um, and U is a is an open subset of V, which is just stable. Yeah. So I should actually write spec sim of V, but um, um, <clears throat> it's, it's clear what I mean. Um, then uh, the, other, the second condition is that uh, U, so the complement of U must be of the uh, codimension um, strictly bigger than P and that um, U mod G is a scheme. So in general, since the action of, ah, I forgot to say that the action of on you, on you must be free, um, stable, open with free action. Okay, so since the action of, of on you is free, the quotient is always an algebraic space and in order to be to be precise, uh, I also ask that this question is a scheme, although I'm not super sure that this is really necessary, but for safety, I will assume it. And, and in any case, you can always find, for every P, you can always find uh, pairs of representations and open subsets made in this form. This is already due to Totaro, basically. Right, so once you have a scheme approximation like this, you can define... Um, very easily an equivalent theory. So if X, let's say, is a smooth G variety, 
and L is a line bundle, it's a G line bundle on X or equivalently um, line bundle on uh, the quotient line bundle on um, X mod G, which we always use in the form of, let's say, stack. Then we can define an equivalent theory <clears throat> just by setting and um, it group of in degree star, let's say, and maybe no, let's let's give a name to the star. Let's call it P. So it P um, of so equivalent of P to so P G X with coefficients in L to be the Tavit group of dimension P um, of X cross over G with U L. And here I have to choose um, U V to be um, an approximation, a scheme approximation. of um, BG in co-dimension um, smaller or equal than P plus one. Uh, and there are condition that I usually forget to state is that, uh, well, X should be, we should make sure that this quotient here, which is the quotient of X cross U by the diagonal action, uh, should be also scheme. So maybe I will just say that X has to be G quasi projective. Um, maybe. So as, as soon as X um, cross U, uh, well, this this not because this definition depends on the choice. So maybe I'll just say x g quasi projective. There are other conditions that you can put on x such that the, this quotient will exist. Uh, so one it, one has a definition in a bit in a slightly in a slightly higher generality, but. Um, today, quasi-projectivity will, will, will suffice. And yeah, here we, we need to choose uh, UV to be any scheme approximation in the right dimension. Okay. Uh, good. So this defines a good uh, equivalent theory uh, that is independent on, uh, uh, on the choices. So maybe remark this definition. Only depends on um, the quotient. So um, this is more an equivalent definition, but uh, if you take two, uh, say x mod g and y mod h, and if the two quotient stacks are the same, then the associated top it. Uh, groups will be the same. So this does not depend really on the choice of presentation, let's say of the stack, and does not depend on the choice of approximation. Um, right. And also maybe a re remark here again that uh, once one can make a, a sensible theory for algebraic spaces, which I think it should be possible, uh, and it shouldn't even be too hard, I think, then the assumption that X is G quasi projective can be, can be removed. Okay, so this is more of a technical, technical issue here, not really, it's not really super serious, I think. Okay, so enough for uh, say notation. Maybe I'll, I'll just make some examples. 
and this example is actually a theorem of Fazel. Uh, with a, somehow, an observation of Matthias Wendt. And it's that the Tovid ring um, of BGM is isomorphic to the, um, is an algebra, let's say, over the growth in the ring of the base field in, with two generators, T and H, and three relations that are the following. H squared is equal to 2H, IT, and IH. So this is a sloppy way of, 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 of um, writing that I'm taking the quotient by the ideal generated by H squared minus 2H, the ideal generated by all the products of the type elements of E times T, and also all the products of the form elements of i times h. Okay, so I don't want to write the ideal generated by because then it becomes somehow it becomes a bit. The notation is already heavy, and here of course h means uh, hyperbolic form. Uh, of dimension two, so maybe this is a hyperbolic plane. And <clears throat> I should tell you what T and H are in this setting. And T is, uh, as you can imagine, the Euler class of O minus one, which lives in degree uh, one, O one. And yeah, and uh, H is something a bit fun, is kind of a, uh, a version of the hyperbolic form, as you as you can see here, and it lives in degree uh, uh, zero uh, or one. Oh, there we go. So every once in a while, my com my computer stops to like writing. So this is in degree zero uh, or one. Okay, and what, what, what is it? It is the class corresponding to somehow the pullback of two belonging to tau zero, zero belonging to H zero, I zero, uh, twist O one. And this both these classes go to zero under the reduction map to Milner K theory mode two and the reduction map from I zero again to Z mode two, right? So this is a, a well-defined class in this pullback. And in this specific degree, since uh, tau zero <coughs> of BGM has no two torsion, this tau ring is, is the pullback. So this gadget really gives an element here and H is sent to this. So, good. Um, maybe I have to say that yeah, this presentation is not exactly what uh, Fazel, this, uh, doesn't really appear directly in Fazel and Vance papers, but it can easily be deduced from, from their work. So, <clears throat> right, so maybe, oh wow. Um, Let's go with another example. Uh, this time, the example is um, a bit more interesting. Look. Ah, maybe, yeah. So <clears throat> before I, I keep going. So although I quote this example of, uh, of BGM as an example, it is actually the main, main, main ingredient of all the things we do today. So uh, maybe calling it example is a, is really reductive. This is a very important theorem. So, yeah, actually, maybe. Um, 
this is really how it should be called. And <clears throat> right, so now we can make an example, uh, which is uh, bmu2. And this is due, essentially, this came up in joint work uh, with some people. So uh, myself, uh, Tuan Nguyen, and Matthias Wendt. Uh, and also in, in it came up in another joint work of me and Andrea. So it's not that this this is very a very difficult computation, but just it came up in different in instances in different works. So <clears throat> and it's of uh, the case of Bima two. In this case, um, I first have to make a definition, and then I can tell you what the Chavit ring is. So I need to define, uh, let's say, a kind of characteristic class uh, that will pop up later in the in the presentation, and maybe I will call uh, D. If we have a um, a mu two bundle, so if if we have a so B mu two classifies B mu, B mu two mu two torsors. So if I have <clears throat> um, but mu two torsos, okay, so this classifies mu two torsos. And mu two torsos are the same thing as uh, vector bundles, so line bundles, sorry, what um, yeah, well, every mu two torso has, has an associated line bundle, right with a with um with um uh, isomorphism of the square to uh, o, so every time I have a mu two torsor, um, over x, okay. Every time I have a mu two torsor, I can um, associate with it a line, line bundle um, on X. And with this and this line bundle has in addition a canonical choice of a isomorphism uh, of the square tool, as I said. And in particular, this gadget gives me a well-defined class, say L phi in the Grothendieck bit ring of X. Okay. And in particular, this gives me also a well-defined class in the uh, unramified Grothendieck bit ring of X. So the global sections of the GW sheaf, unramified sections, okay? Okay, and so with this definition, I can, uh, ah, right, and this class, I denote the image of, of, of this construction uh, D. So uh, say the class of uh, L phi is called D of the mu two torsor. Okay. And <clears throat> with this definition, I can state now this theorem. That, as I said, is due to the to the people above, um, and it's that the Tavit ring of B mu two is isomorphic to the Grothendieck ring of the base field with three uh, algebra say generate three uh, generators T H E. And um, right, T H E, 
yes, with a lot of relations. Um, I'll try to write them in order. So I, T, I, H, H square equal to H. Then there is a TH. Um, and then there is some more relations involving E, and this is H E uh, big H E um, E squared equals minus two E and T E equals uh, two T. Okay. All right, so I take the ideal generated by all these bunch of relations. And the isomorphism is realized by sending T uh, as before and H as before. So uh, we are dealing with, in any case, uh, stuff which is equivalent, stuff which is gem equivalent over a point. So all these rings are uh, algebras over the growth and equity ring of BGM. So T and H are always forced. And the only thing that I have to say is what happens to E and E goes to one minus D where D is the class D that I defined before applied to the universal torso. And now, <clears throat> so there isn't much time to to discuss how to how to prove this. So maybe maybe I'll instead of instead of saying how to prove it, which is actually not so difficult, uh, I will um, um, yeah. What will I do? Um, I will try to right to just make maybe write down write down what the, what what the groups look like and maybe if i have time i'll, I'll explain how to prove this at the end so um additively um this is the description so maybe i'll make a table so here's cohomological degree 0 1 2 uh, 3 and then the twist O and O1. So technically one should be precise and really make a choice of, uh, of O1, right? Because this theory really depends on isomorphisms of line bundles. So one should be precise and make a choice for what O1 is and track that choice down along. So when you make the computation, but it doesn't really, so in, in our situation, this is not really, really a problem because in, in most of the situations, the, uh, the, the relations are not affected by, uh, the, cho by the choice of, uh, sorry, all, the, our relations only depend on the isomorphism class of O1. So it, uh, making different choices doesn't really uh, um, affect the formulas in practice. And so let's write what we have. So we have in degree zero, we have GW uh, one. Can, yes. Can you say what is the Picard group of BMO two? Ah, uh, yes, it's uh, Zemo two. Okay. Uh, yeah. Th thanks for asking. I um, and generator is this uh, right universal yeah. classifying guy. Yes. Right. So right. So maybe right. So. Um, 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 what, yes, so B mu two, let's say mu two is inside GM, and this gives you a map of classifying spaces. Uh, okay, and uh, so there is a there is a O one here. Okay, that you can pull back, and that pull the pullback of O one, which is a generator of the Picard group of BGM. Uh, uh, pullbacks to generator of the pickup group of uh, BMU2. So this generates uh, 
and the, it's pulled back along this, say, I. Um, generates a peak um, of B mu two, which is isomorphic to Z mod two actually. Um, okay. Um, right, so, <clears throat> so as I said, um, so in degree zero, we find uh, GW times one. So this is the unit of the intersection product plus uh, W uh, E. W means the maybe GW here means uh, GWK and W means WK. Um, in this in this setting. Okay, so <clears throat> here we have ZH. Okay, here we have um, zero. And here you have C mod four T and zero, Z mod four T square. And the pattern continues alternating uh, C mod four T square here and there. And <clears throat> zeros on what remains open. Okay. Um, good. So. <laughs> and where is D? Ah, uh, D is here. It's E and is sent to one minus D. Ah, okay. Yeah, right. Okay. Um, right. So you see, this is a bit weird. So there is something there is something um, in, in, in cohomological degree zero. You see this algebra is a bit weird, has, two, has, has something, has some too much stuff in degree zero. <laughs> and um, so it, it, uh, I'm not so sure how to interpret this yet, but I think, I think the work of, uh, of Matthias, the ongoing work with, of Matthias and uh, uh, Eden, um, on uh, on uh, <clears throat> uh, say path components of uh, of classifying spaces might have something something to might be used to to explain things like this. I'm not so sure. I that this is just a guess. Okay. Um, right. And maybe maybe another way another another way to describe this this direct sum is that. Uh, one one of the one of the summons is related in some sense to mu two torsors which are of uh, geometric nature, and so where the total space of the torsor is connected, while uh, the other the other summon has something to do with um, uh, torsors whose total space so torsors of arithmetic nature so that come for example from field extensions of the base. And in this situation, uh, the, the recognize this because the total space is is disconnect is not geometrically connected, and those will give you a class on the on the on the second summand. You see, because this one minus d pretty much tells us that as soon as the as this invariant d, um, right, as soon as the invariant d is a uh, is um is a square, we can replace it with a one, and the invariant then disappears. So I don't know if this really is a good explanation, but to, to uh, at the moment it 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 this explanation answers the questions that come up during during the work. So <laughs> for the moment, uh, this is what happens. Okay, so we are already uh, almost one hour in the talk, so maybe I should start talking about uh, um, classifying like uh, modular species of curves. Um, <clears throat> and so, what should I say about modular species of curves? Well, um, let's see. 
Um, I'll start with M11, which is the uh, stack classifying um, elliptic curves. Um, so it is a daily month for stack. And uh, the main thing to recall that is important for, for today's, today's work is that uh, you, can, you can describe it as a, as a, as a quotient by GM. Uh, in the following way. So <clears throat> basically, uh, it's a consequence of Riemann rock, right? That every elliptic curve over, over a base can be embedded uh, in a suitable projective bundle over this base. And that <clears throat> if you're in characteristic different from two and three, the main, the only thing that the, the elliptic curve is completely characterized by uh, an equation, which is somehow uh, easily described, maybe. Um, so if you are over k, it's easier to write the equation I have. I, so I'll, I'll do in this case, every elliptic curve over k is inside, can be embedded in P2k for the equation. Um, well, we define equation, say, uh, y square equal x cube plus um, ax plus b for suitable a and b. And there is a, and curves are isomorphic if and only if the a and b have a certain relation, uh, meaning that there is a unit um, that acts by fourth power uh, on a and sixth powers on b. <coughs> And so two elliptic curves with two different equations are isomorphic if and only if uh, one equation can be obtained from the other by acting in this way with a unit on, uh, on A and B. So this in terms of, uh, when you write this down in terms of stacks, what, what it means is that uh, M11 uh, is isomorphic to the quotient of something by GM. And the something is um, basically um, an affine plane, which I call V. Uh, minus a curve. And now V is the affine plane A2 with action, say, uh, which is spec, say, of uh, K, A, B, and the action of G on this guy is uh, um, say GM acts by, um, how do I write it? So maybe U, A, B, um, is equal to, this is not a good way of writing it. So maybe GM X on V by sending. So a unit U and an element AB are sent to U um, to the power minus four A U to the power minus six B. Okay. So this is the action and C is the curve uh, given by the vanishing of the discriminant, right? So is the curve uh, for A to the power three plus 27B squared equal to zero. Okay. Right. And so, uh, maybe remind you that every uh, elliptic curve over a base has a natural line bundle, okay, which is the, um, so if E over S is an elliptic curve, then the um, differential forms, the relative differential forms 
are align bundle on E and I can say, uh, uh, pull it back along the, the unit. So this is a line bundle. on the base and E, I remind you that E is the section. So so maybe I call the section S. Um, so this is a line bundle on S. And actually this line bundle is not, uh, just has one, one more important uh, feature and it's that it, it comes automatically with a, uh, with a trivialization of the 12th power given exactly by the determinant. So uh, this bundle that I call maybe E has the property that uh, E comes with a trivialization of E12, which I can see as a, as a map from E6 tensor E6 to O, which is exactly the discriminant. Maybe I call this uh, delta. Right, this is exactly what it is. Right, and um, so in particular, in particular, given what we have we have we have done before, right? This this gadget automatically gives us uh, um, an element in uh, gives us a class um, in the growth and bit ring of the base where our curves curve lives. Okay, and uh, maybe. In, in analogy with the notation that I gave before, I want to call this, um, how do I call this generator? Maybe this, this I call, call this invariant E. Um, yeah, of the elliptic curve. Okay. And with some of these observations, um, so maybe this was a remark. And with this observation done, I can say what uh, what the Chavis ring is. Uh, this is this comes in the joint work with Andrea. Uh, actually, wait. His surname comes first. Um, there we go. So right, I can I can tell you what the Chavit ring is now. So it's the Chavit ring of M one one. Um, is isomorphic to uh, GWK, and I fix some generators T, H, E, and relations. Um, so again, you probably can guess all of them now. <laughs> I T, I H, uh, H square equal to H. 60H, HE, small HE, um, E square equal to uh, minus 12H, minus 12E, um, and TE equals to 12t, where again, t goes to the usual thing, h as well. 
and E goes to this invariant that we just defined of the in the to the universal example of this invariant. Um, there are too many is here, <laughs> so the maybe I'll just write universal elliptic curve. Um, Okay. Uh, <clears throat> ah, right. And here, so maybe I should have said, if I want to be precise here, I don't really go to the Grotten bit ring, but I go to the uh, ramified version of it. Okay. Uh, I mean, you go to the Grotten bit ring first, and then you take the you map to the ramified section. So it doesn't really matter. <clears throat> right. So um, maybe I'll point out two strategies for this and there is a there is a first uh, maybe are there questions before before I, I i i keep going okay so if not i'll uh, feel yes. free to yeah can you show for a second uh, the computation for bmo2 again i mean just to compare this answer yeah yeah they're very similar so uh, there, it, the, yeah, well, yeah. here it is. See, they're very, very similar. And um, I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> mm -hmm. You probably already know, but... Uh, it, no, it, I know. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Uh, the, you do, the, you the, just the, don't know that you do. <laughs> okay. So, um, okay. Yeah, but just, just to check, uh, this guy is uh, an algebra of... Uh, that one, right? It is yeah. an algebra over what? I mean, uh, you have a map from, from, I guess you described it, right? From M11 to BMO2, right? Uh, so, no, not exactly. No? So that's, that's, that, that, that I'm going to, I'm going to, to tell you right now. So, okay, yeah. Um, well, Yes, so uh, maybe you do. Yes, okay. Yes, you do, but it's not uh, that. That is not exactly what the the, the thing you use. Uh, so yes, you're right. You have a map, but but it's not um, it's not exactly what we want to use. So <clears throat> so first strategy for the proof maybe. First strategy is just to to use somehow this decomposition. Uh, to use this description, this geometric description for um, the computation. So we we're in, in an equivalent setting. So we we unfortunately this decomposition is uh, respects the action of GM. So you can divide basically. You can see that the group of uh, M11 will appear as an, so M11 is open inside the uh, mod GM and the mod GM has a closed sub sub gadget which is um, given by the cusp some other this cuspidal curve uh, So you, you use this localization sequence and remembering that, um, uh, so we are working equivalently. So in practice, this, this means that you're, you're really looking at the Tovid groups of, uh, of V, Tovid groups of, uh, of a curve inside V and the Tovid, so <clears throat> times an approximation, of course. And <clears throat> So the groups of V minus C and right. So as, as you remember in the definition, you only need to choose an approximation of B GM and that will work for any basically uh, GM scheme. So here I'm implicitly multiplying by a suitably, suitably big approximation of uh, BGM, but somehow <clears throat> the important thing is that this gadget is a very, 
is it very manageable because now V is just a vector bundle, is a representation, so is a say vector bundle over VGM. Uh, wait a moment, and um, and C is actually a very explicit curve, right? Is a is a cusp, as we've seen before, and so this cusp uh, is um, is well, you can normalize it. And when you normalize that cusp, you get an A1 with action uh, of, the, of weight minus two, okay? And so you know what is the Chovid ring of V. You know what, well, here is where you need to be careful. You don't know the Chovid ring of this, but you know the homology version. So the Chovid say homology of, uh, of this gadget, it's the same as the Chovid homology of A1, which is the same as the Chovid homology of BGM. So <clears throat> you can pretty much identify what this map does in uh, in uh, in Chavit theory. So the localization sequence in Chavit theory um, looks like this. You have a Chavit of VGM. You have a Chavit. Well, I don't want to write a ring here. So if, okay, no, I, I, it is the Chovit ring of VGM, but you have to be careful to what, um, I'm not writing the Chovit ring of C, of course. So star minus one, VGM bullet. So this is technically not I push forward, but it's induced by uh, I push forward. And in order to understand this map as a map of uh, Chovit, with BGM algebras, you only need to see where one goes, and it's easy to see that one goes, one must go to the um, say fundamental class of C, which is the same as the Euler class of O minus twelve, which is in in the algebra description of BGM is six HT. So here you get your Chovit ring of uh, Chovit ring of um, um, M11. Okay, once again, my laptop is a bit misbehaving. Uh, Okay, um, and here the sequence continues, uh, but it, it, it doesn't continue much. There's one something here only in degree zero, and it's it's somehow you, you can you can you can work with that pretty much explicitly, and uh, and see that the say now. So at this point, you you know that this boundary map is zero. Uh, so this boundary map goes to, uh, so is equal to zero if star bullet is not uh, zero O and it is just the Map from the global sections to G of GW to H. Um, how's it called? Um, zero of BGM. Uh, with if and it is subjective. If uh, star bullet is equal to zero, to zero O. Okay, so in practice, this localization sequence gives you a nice uh, description. So it tells you that this Chavit ring over here is basically the quotient of the Chavit ring of BGM modulus six HT. And there is one extra generator coming from something that, bound, that is sent to a generator of, of, 
this with group over here. And if you open up this map explicitly, you you see that uh, the uh, class E actually maps the generator uh, over there. I made a mistake here. It's similar to what Vimeo 2 was. So here is one minus E. So apologize for this. So, uh, right. So th this is this is the, the it doesn't change much, but with this definition, the, the relations are correct. So it's not difficult to see that uh, that E uh, maps to a generator there. And to figure out the relations, you have to work a bit. But so I haven't answered your question, Alexei, but I, I, I will answer it now with the second strategy, uh, which say, says actually a bit more. And that uh, maybe I'll state another, uh, maybe, yeah. Let me call it somehow. Uh, it's not a theorem yet because I haven't finished the proof yet, but uh, it's almost there. So maybe uh, guess. So an educated guess. Uh, And it's that um, when you look, so that the, the discriminant, which is a map from uh, M11 to BMU12, that sends an elliptic curve to the uh, 12, sixth power of, um, yeah, sorry, to the 12th power of, of, uh, of the hot bundle together with its trivialization. Sense. So E or S to the um, utilization of the Hodge bundle. Um, um, gives this map gives uh, an equivalence of the associated motivic spaces. Well, spectral technically. Um, So maybe one has to be careful to what notion of sp motivic space or motivic spectrum you want to associate with uh, a stack. So we have two choices here. One is to use somehow uh, Totaro's definition of the motive of a classifying space. So with a bit of care and um, so that this is the thing that I'm less sure about. So. This is a bit, uh, one has to be careful. Um, but the, the idea is that one defines the motive of a, of a, of a, of a quotient by basically taking the, the limit of the motives of the approximations and that the, the resulting object will not depend on, the, I mean, will be well, well defined. So this is what Totaro does. It does it in, in the setting of uh, DM. And I think the same should work in SH. Uh, or at the very least in DM tilde, but I haven't checked all the details here. So maybe take this with a grain of salt. And the other alternative, which I'm more sure of, is that you can definitely define uh, a GM spectrum in the sense of, uh, let's say, uh, equivalent SH defined by Marco Ua. Uh, so this can be both objects of SH, so using a uh, Totaro, or yeah, well, I should, I should, well, since this is not really what Totaro does, maybe I shouldn't say that, that he does it, because then if it's not correct, <laughs> it's not, it's not, it's not nice. 
So it's say following the ideas of Totaro. Or in SHGM. And this is following the ideas of Marco Iwa. And once you have, so let's 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 work over here. So in, in this setting, say the, the proof, how would, would you have to work? Well, so, sorry, this SHGM statement is stronger, right? Than the Tata type. Yes, the GM, the 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 statement in uh, in uh, so right, the statement in here is stronger. Mm -hmm. uh, but technically, I, I'm not exactly sure of how how the cohomology theories that we know about are interpreted here, while it's easier to interpret them here. And so that's why I, I say both. <laughs> but yeah, I agree with you that this is this is an essentially stronger statement and should imply the arrow. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it, it, if it, I mean, I think I think it does imply the other one. The thing is that I don't know if you can use this for for saying anything on solid groups. But pro probably yes. I, I, I as I said, the proof is still a bit uh, um, in, incomplete. Let's say. Uh, but yeah, the, the main idea is very is very easy, and it's it's basically what you were saying uh, that uh, I'm just very geometric, and it's uh, that M one one is basically obtained as a as a. So if we write this the composition that I wrote here of M one one, which corresponds to this, right? So M one one is a quotient of this vector bundle over BGM. Uh, with open complement, this, this cusp. Well, it's a stacky cusp. And um, there is a the term, there's a discriminant map that goes to to uh, to now a one with action minus twelve of weight minus twelve. This minus twelve means that a unit acts by multiplying by minus twelve uh, by say u t u x on t by uh, u to the minus twelve t. Okay. Okay, so this is a zero section. This is a vector bundle over BGM. This is a zero section and the complement is B mu 12. And the discriminant, of course, which is defined here, uh, here induces pullback, pullback squares because M11 is exactly the non-vanishing locus of the discriminant. And so this is a diagram of, let's say, I wrote the diagram of stacks, but it's really a GM equivalent diagram over the point, right? So maybe, yeah. So if I didn't write GM everywhere, this would, would have been a GM equivalent diagram over the point. And then <clears throat> with this, you can, you can in, in this setting, you have a natural map induced from the, let's say the motive of this uh, to the motive of that induced by, by Delta. And this map is an equivalence. Why is it an equivalence? Well, because uh, now these motives can also be, since this stacks are smooth, can also be reinterpreted as, uh, let's say, border more motives. So obtained by taking the exceptional push forward to the to spec K. But then <clears throat> here you have a, a basically by homotopy invariance. This gadget is a vector bundle over BGM. So this is equivalently isomorphic to, I mean, equivalently equivalent to a point. It is also equivalent equivalent to a point. And so this, as soon as you have a map here, this map must be uh, an homotopy equivalence in, a, in a equivalent SH, okay? And the same here, this gadget is a singular thing, but it has a normalization given by uh, a, a1 with action minus two. So that thing is again a vector bundle over 
Uh, um, this is again a vector bundle uh, over BGM. So this is a mm, this is a n, not an isomorphism, right? And <clears throat> so and this gadget also maps to this norm this normalization also maps to to zero, right? Here. Um, <clears throat> and but this gadget is again a vector bundle, so a lot of invariance then in uh, equivalent SH tells us that this is a point. And so what I'm trying to say is that as soon as you can define maps here in uh, between the borel more motifs of these six gadgets, you will find that the map induced by this is an equivalence and the map induced by this is also an equivalence. And this is a map of fiber sequences. So the map induced by this on the borel more motifs must be an equivalence. And now <clears throat> to, so now this is done because you can, by duality, you, you notice that the borel more motives, so the exceptional push forwards are just, um, well, the motives up to let's say uh, <clears throat> up to a twist by the tom tom space of the uh, cotangent band. Okay, uh, this is a bit sketched, but this is this is what happens. Uh, uh, I don't really really have time to start writing down the six functors formalism. Let's say. That is involved in this, but the the heart of the of the observation is is really is really this. So maybe 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 let's say that one of the one of the the key facts. What I think it's the key fact here, uh, and it's something that I haven't checked completely yet. So key, maybe not fact but point that I'm doing in these days, is that the point is how you define how you define uh, a map from say the upper row to the lower row and the, the issue is that uh, right so delta is smooth when you when you look when you see see it as a map between m11 and b mu12 but it's not smooth of course here because there is a singular fiber which is this but the thing is that delta anyway satisfies what i think is a, a, an equivalent version of the formalism of um, fundamental classes introduced by the Gliese uh, um, uh, Jean Kahn, so the Gliese and collaborators, so maybe. Oh, now I never remember if, if the H goes first or later. Uh, I hope this is correct. Uh, in their work, right, they construct fundamental classes associated to uh, maps that are have a global factorization via a regular embedding and then a smooth map. And this delta exactly satisfies that formalism. So, so as soon as you have their formalism, you can write a sort of gizing, gizing pullback, but really at the level of spectra. So this gives a easy pullback. On um, GM spectra. And this gizing pullback is compatible with the uh, with this localization sequence by somehow by the formalism. So, but as I said, this is this is something that I'm doing in these days because they don't technically work with group actions. And so I'm not completely sure that the formalism fully works in this setting. And I think it does, but I don't want to, to, to claim something that I haven't checked uh, completely. So, uh, uh, so you check that their formalism uh, works with G actions. Uh, 
Okay. So I think does this this should answer your previous question about the similarity of the Tovid ring of uh, BMU12 with uh, M11. It's because they have basically well every every invariant that they can possibly have in uh, in SH must be the same. And so the difference the difference in the in in relations the fact that there are six and twelves and rather than one ones and twos comes from the fact that well it's a difference between bmu2 and bmu12 so a similar computation here works for bmu n where n is even with small modifications on on the relations does this answer to your previous question alexei yeah and much more than that okay <laughs> Good. Uh, right. So, are there more questions before we go on? I actually, oh wait, actually, we're almost at. So this is one hour and a half. So I, I still. Okay. First, are there more questions on this? Okay. If not, um, I would have. So it's already one hour and a half. So um, if you're tired, we can stop here. Or otherwise, I have something quickly left to say about uh, M11 bar, so stable curves of Dinos 1, uh, which somehow brings up all the things that we have done up to now together. Um, but again, if, you, if you're tired, we can stop here. There is. Uh, no, no, please, please go ahead. It's okay, I'll try, to be, I'll try to be, to be light. Um, Right, so what it, it is it here? Okay, uh, um, come on. Um, so M11 uh, bar. Um, right, so what about M11 bar? So the, the, now the idea is very simple uh, and it's so, so first of all, <clears throat> M11 bar classifies um, families of curves which are which have a section, and where the fibers are um, uh, <clears throat> well, well the map has to be flat of course, and I want so I want fibers which are of dimension one uh, of arithmetic genus one uh, that are geometrically connected and geometrically reduced. And um, such that the fibers are at war, have at worst nodal singularities, which means that the local rings are either, say, over geometrically, uh, geometrically are either regular or of the form k double brackets x y mod x y. Okay, so like nodes with, with distinct tangents, over algebraically closed fields. So this is what M11 bar classifies, and it's a compactification, say the compactification of M11. And <clears throat> again, uh, basically, Riemann rock theory um, tells us that uh, um, curves, curves of this form are also uh, can also be embedded in uh, in um, in P2. Of, of, of a suitable vector bundle if you're over a base or just p2 if you're over over a field and um the um, these curves will have zero discriminant but these curves can be characterized by some properties of uh, the coefficient of their equation so uh, maybe <clears throat> in practice this says that m11 uh, bar is um, can be obtained, so is isomorphic to the quotient of this um, A2 that we used before with actions minus four and minus six, the um, this vector bundle that I introduced before on BGM, right? Minus the uh, origin, and then quotiented by the action of GM. And this is, of course, 
something that contains um, M11, which instead was the complement in this A246 minus four minus six of uh, this locus of singular of singular curves. Right, and this is open. And the, well, since, since we are here, um, maybe let me make even a bit more space and keep going with the geometry of the situation. Um, as usual, when you do intersection theory, if there is something open, you want to know what is the closed complement. And the closed complement, we can see it here in the somehow in the geometric description as quotients. The closed complement is clearly um, C minus the origin, mod GM, where C was the, the fine curve uh, with equation. Uh, discriminant equal to zero, which is, uh, so for a cube plus 27 b squared equals zero. Okay. Um, right, and, and this gadget, as we said, uh, is, is a cuspidal curve to which we have removed the singular point. So, so this actual this, this this gadget now is a is a is a is really isomorphic to to GM, right? Well, as as a scheme, I mean, not not with the group structure, but if you if you're careful, uh, so this is well, isomorphic, let's say, to a one minus zero with an action of weight minus two. So it's not really an isomorphism, but the, the, the action is a is a bit is a bit different. So, so this is mod GM. But this gadget over here now is is exactly what B mu two is. This is how you can construct B mu two, right? Because B mu two is basically classifies vector bundles with a section that is not zero. So with a trivialization of the second power. Of the second power, yes. Right. Uh, so, so the so B mu two in practice is the closed complement of uh, M one one inside M one one bar, and so now using what we know on M one one and what we know on B mu two, we can we can figure out what M one one bar is, and so so the the idea for the well. First, I have to state a theorem uh, that says um, again. So, okay, we can describe the Chavit ring of M one one bar as the GW algebra generated by three classes. Th v modular relations that this time will look a tiny bit different. Uh, so I need to, to copy them because I don't remember all of them. So I t i h and h square equals to two h is is the usual thing, <clears throat> and then we have h v. Uh, small h v v square equals minus two v and then twelve h t squared equals v t. Okay, uh, so it looks very similar to b mu two, but with some differences. And now I will tell you what the classes are, so T and H as usual. Uh, and V goes to, uh, I push forward 
of the class we defined earlier on B mu two. Remember, it was the class classifying uh, associated with some other tautological class associated with a line bundle and out with a trivialization of the, sec of the second power. <clears throat> right. So maybe for completeness, completeness, I would say that this gadget lives in degree uh, one, uh, zero, one, oh. And so uh, maybe I will write down additively. Um, so I'll make again my table. Um, 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 wait. Um, well, okay. So <clears throat> technically, the picker group uh, of uh, of M one one bar is Z. So technically, I should tell you what you find here for every line bundle. So O2, O3, etc. But the thing is that the generators are all in, uh, in, uh, in, lower in, in low degree. And also the relations are all in, let's say, low degree. And so, so we have already a good picture if I only somehow display what happens in, uh, in twist O and in twist O1 and in a low uh, cohomological degree, let's say. Yeah, but you always have periodicity, right? So sorry? I mean you always have periodicity to periodicity for the picker group. So you don't need to write anything in for O of two, something like that. Yeah, yeah, sure. Then right, right. That, that's the other thing you you the, the theory is always periodic mode. The, right. And that's that's the other thing, yeah. But I'm always I'm always a bit skeptical about this because the theory is periodic, yes, but it depends on isomorphisms. And so well, okay, so you, you're right. Yeah, yeah of course, uh, when you write down, say, relations. Yeah, so... You, you should choose some periodicity sometimes. Right. Yeah. But yes, you're right. So I, I don't, I don't, I don't need... I, I'm, this is already complete. So uh, cohomological degree zero, one, how many do I need here? Um, I think I, zero, one, two, three. Up to three is enough, and then... Um, so in degree zero, we have GW on the generator one. One denotes really the, as, as usual, the unit of the intersection product. Um, and here we have ZH. In degree one, we have ZTH plus um, um, V, oh sorry, there's a copy copy of uh, W K on the generator V. Okay, now here W and V look too similar, so we'll write this. Okay, and here we have uh, Z T. Then in cohomological degree two, the things simplify, and we get the usual Z bond twenty four t squared. Mm, yes, and here is that mod 24 t squared h. And from this point on, uh, there is, well, so there are t, the t's appear here. So as usual, we have this cross pattern where this is the same uh, in these degrees, and this other gadget is the same in the other degrees. Okay. Right. 
<clears throat> and so so for for um, the proof of this is 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 nothing uh, nothing serious at this point is always the same uh, um, strategy so maybe i don't really have to say much here so you look at at the at the description here which tells you that m11 bar is the complement of a zero section in a bundle so the localization sequence associated to zero section bundle complement of the zero section tells you tells you almost everything uh, so maybe That's the first step. Um, so the localization sequence associated with the zero section and a complement. Um, <clears throat> tells you pretty much what you want to know because it gives you that um, your Soviet ring of M11 bar up to something coming from the boundary has to be a quotient of uh, the Chavid ring of uh, this bundle, which is the Chavid ring of uh, uh, BGM, modulo what arrives from this inclusion. But this inclusion is just pointing, it's just basically the ideal generated by the Euler class of, uh, of this bundle as a bundle over BGM. So this is this modulo the ideal generated by the Euler class of uh, this gadget. Let's call it P. Now there are too many Vs, sorry. Um, maybe I choose another letter. Um, how do I denote a vector bundle? F. Um, And the Euler class of F uh, is just basically since F is a sum of uh, O minus four, F is a O minus four plus O minus six over BGM. This is <clears throat> Euler class of O minus four times the Euler class of O minus six, which is um, basically 12. Well, this is. Uh, um, 2 HT times 6 HT in the multiplicative notation that we have set up. So this is a nice 12 H squared T squared, which is since quite now this 12 H is the same as uh, uh, it was uh, three, not six. On yeah, exactly, three. exactly. Right. Yeah, right. Thanks. Um, And now x squared is a 2h, but quadratic forms act on t by, by their rank. So 2h becomes 4, and this is the usual 24 t squared. Right, thanks for correcting. Um, uh, right, so, so this, you, this tells you pretty much everything about the ring structure of, uh, of, uh, of this, right? So it tells you that. So with ring of this guy has a subalgebra which is um, uh, of this form. And to this subalgebra, you need to add one generator, which maps via delta to, to, to this group over here, which is again, uh, just a free rank one copy of the small bit, uh, bit ring of the base field. And so the only thing is to understand what, what, uh, what happens here. And some other now a bit of a, of work, let's say um, the push forward of this class E. A bit of work shows that you can 
you can choose, you can, so this, this gadget maps via Delta to, uh, to, to a generator of, of the group over here, which is a, a W maybe. So this, to be precise, this is an H a zero of uh, BGM coefficients in K minor bit minus one. So this is W. Um, and once you once you once you show once you have this, you're very happy because you don't have to, to do anything else because basically uh, projection formulas tell you about uh, the, what is the formula? Tell you about all the relations that involve V. Because you can, you can since V is a push forward, you can trade, um, you can trade the relations there for relations that hold in uh, BGM. Um, so, and the input is the computation of mu two, right. And that's pretty much it, in the sense that this gives us a nice description of uh, M, of the Chavit ring of M11 bar. And maybe a last observation is that, um, yeah. Um, so I, I still haven't thought of, of to a description of, uh, of this class V over the real numbers. Um, so I, I cannot really uh, say in terms of like real topology what this class is yet. Uh, it would be nice if there was a description. I, I'll, I'm, I mean, this is something we, we still have to do, but uh, we have a description for uh, the extra class E on, uh, on M11. For that, we know, we know what it is, or at, at least we know what it does. Um, Um, so this class, which I remind you is a global section of the unramified growth in the shift on M11, is a section that basically, um, similar to what happened for, for BMU2, um, is related to the connectedness of the real points of the elliptic curve over R. So, um, of the components of, say, an, um, an elliptic curve. Uh, okay, now there's this funny situation in which E is both an elliptic curve and a class. Um, say of real points of elliptic curves. Over R, because if you have a, a, an elliptic curve over R, Then the, the 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 real points are might be right connected or, or or not, and this is exactly decided by the fact that the discriminant is a square or not. Uh, 
so this has um yeah has one or two components and depending on the, the sign of the discriminant and if you if you remember how our invariant e was defined this here was exactly the discriminant you see and so and so um whenever whenever the discriminant is a is a square right it's it's um it's associated element in the gluten with ring can be it, well is one is the um, hook bracket one form so the the rank one diagonal form with one <laughs> one in the diagonal and thus in this situation the invariant that we wrote here would be zero right so this is a maybe a geomet geometric uh, application of all this business that we have a square now that we have a class in uh, we can make sense of a class in uh, in uh, codimension zero that uh, knows about connected components of our, of our real elliptic curve and that's the only that technically is the only new invariant over over R. 